After a couple of hours of gameplay on the Xbox 360, I really wasn't too happy with the cooling. It wasn't getting super hot. It was still getting about 59, 60 degrees Celsius, which isn't super hot, but I still wanted to have it run a little bit cooler on that GPU. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and do a fan mod. Now, I have this 12 volt DC fan that I pulled off an old Pentium uh, CPU years and years ago. It's just been hanging out. So I'm gonna try to use this one. It is important that you make sure you use a 12 volt fan uh, for this mod. And my plan is to actually go ahead and remove this fan and mount it right here over the GPU cooling. And if you take a look in a previous video, I actually have pre-drilled holes in that area. So this CPU fan, when mounted, I'll probably zip tie it up onto this to pull the airflow from the top and then over that GPU cooler. Now I don't really want to actually modify the board itself. So what my plan to do here is go ahead and modify the fan. I think if I go ahead and pull up one of these stickers here, I can get underneath there and just solder two new wires in parallel on this fan. So I'm really just pulling the same voltage off the fan and directing it over here. And both fans will continue to run. Uh, these two fans are already running in parallel, so I'm just adding a third smaller fan to run in parallel. So I'll get started by removing this fan. from the previous heatsink. So that's disconnected. Let me take those screws out. And then I will go ahead and it, see, I don't, I won't have it sit directly on there. It'll be sitting slightly above right about here when it gets mounted um, on the case itself. I'll have to figure that out so that it doesn't hit up against that. And then what I'll do is run this around and connect it to the fan. Now, I am gonna go ahead and just cut the wire off this connector. I think what I wanna do is use this extension cable to give me just a little bit more. What I'll do is just go ahead and cut this in half, solder this end onto here, and then I will solder the other end onto this wire, and then use some heat shrink tubing on top of that to just give some protection to the wire. So the first thing I want to do is let's just go ahead and cut this wire in half. And then I am going to take this end, um, which also does actually match here. So it's kind of like an extension. Um, and uh, just strip that back with just a little bit. Okay, and there's two. Now taking a look at this, it looks like that the black and the blue wire are connected, which tells me that's going to be negative. So on this side, I will do the blue, uh, this black to that blue, and then the yellow to the uh, brown there. Black being, I assume, the uh, negative side of the power, the electron side. I will move this aside here so I can begin the soldering station. I actually am not modifying the board in any way. Get the flux out. I can just separate these and I can always spin this back together after it's soldered on there. Okay, the first thing I want to do is apply a little bit of solder to these wires. Okay, that's on there. And since this is fresh solder, I'm hoping that it will be enough to apply in here that I don't need to add new solder to stick those. So I'm going to start with the blue and match that with the negative the side here on the center. Maybe hitting the yellow wire a little bit more than I can hit it from this top angle here this way. Not happy with that. I think I need to redo this wire here. Just 
going to go ahead and cut it and reapply some new solder to it. Get this in there one more time without touching that yellow. Okay, that is on there now. What I will do is just get a small zip tie. Let's see if I can zip tie this down here at the very bottom. Okay, make sure that there's no additional pressure applied. And still spins freely, no problem there. And that is on there. Go ahead and cut. And now I have a new connector. Let's replace this sticker. I'll bring it up real close. Actually, I'll take a picture and then post that. Now that I've taken picture, I will go ahead and reapply this sticker here. And that looks looks good. It's just Twist this wire around. Like so, and we have a good connection. And what I'll do is just kind of run that along the bottom and then back up when it goes into the case again. The next thing is I will go ahead and work on the fan. So go ahead and cut this wire off. I might actually not have to I might be able to just actually solder this onto there directly and remove this old connector here now that I think about it Okay, there's the two wires. Connect those in there. Let's get soldering iron and tin them up a little bit. Okay, and then remove. Okay, so we'll put this on this side here. Yes. 
I may have to get tweezers to get that in there. Huh? Let me microwave. What's that? I gotta get that in there without tweezers. Right there. So that is connected. And we're good. Now, I'd like to test this out. So, let's start to put this back together here. Um, might be able to test it without being on the board directly. Make sure any solder is cleared off here. Put my sticker back on there. It's not going to stick anymore. That sticker is <laughs> not going to stick. That's okay. We will connect this over here. I'll set fan here and plug it in. Oh, that is a different connector. These connectors are not the same. This looks like it actually is a slightly different connector. I think I can get it to fit. It just needs this gap here trimmed a little bit. To match. Interesting. So this was really more of an adapter than an extension cable. There. Now that slides on there just fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply power here. Yeah, the colors are matching. Power. Oh, I need to put in the control board. Let's power on, see if the fan spins. Oh, it spins. It was not spinning because it was actually hitting up against that. So the air is pointing down, so I will see how I want to mount this. Um, if I want to mount it that way, although it might be hitting. It does power up, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off then. And then the fan stops spinning. So yeah, the next thing I want to do is determine how I want this to mount. I think I want the air blowing down on it. This will go here. Let's, uh, let's unplug this. Take this off for a minute. I'm gonna unplug power and HDMI as I start to mess around with this a little bit. And I can remove the fan. the way I want this to work. Essentially mounted right in this area. It can't spin if it's that way. It does need clearance. Um, so it might be better off having that on there somehow, similar to how it was before. I don't know that I want to damage that. Maybe. Let 
maybe one zip tie on a corner here or something. I'm not exactly sure. Then it's on the board. Like if I get a zip tie through here, it shouldn't compromise the metal there, especially with a fan on it. I'm not going to put zip tie on tight. It's more just to keep it in place. When and if this thing ever gets jostled. I'd like to put one on another corner too. Try this corner. Let's remove this actually, and then I can use some tweezers to get underneath there. Okay, that's on there, not going anywhere. Did you notice I did not put the zip ties tight at all? I can easily cut them off without ever harming. Fan does spin freely. So then I can put this thing completely back together and then it will see how it runs. I'll run it for another couple hours. Again, I will set the motherboard back into here and screw it all in, put the van in. So let's go ahead and stop video. I'll lift this up. Place this here. And then we will insert the board. And I'm always very careful not to grab by the heat sink that is seated in there. It's got the heat paste on there, so I don't want to mess that up at all. Let's push this through so the, everything is lined up. This little thing should be lined up. It's not. Gotta go sideways here. I'm gonna push so that, that little area is they push through. So those are good, those are in there. I will go ahead and install the fan. First by plugging it in here. Make sure no wires are pinched. I want to route this down towards the bottom and then up like so. So the new wire I just installed. No wires are pinched in there. Just double check. This is not in the way. Really spinning. We're good. We're good there. I can now connect these two wires. Those are in there. Let's set that. So here on the side. There's no moving parts over here, so nothing's gonna hurt it. And 
connect the DVD drive. Oh, um, I want to put the fan drive back on first. Run this on the inside between. Okay. Fan drive securely in. Connect DVD. connected. And there you have it. The fan is installed. Wires are in. I will go ahead and plug this in. So I've increased the airflow inside of the Xbox 360. Hopefully that should keep the system quite a bit cooler. Thank you for watching and again if you like this kind of content be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll keep making videos like this. Tonight I'm going to play Resident Evil 6 from the hard drive and see how the temperatures hold with the fan modification that I installed. Now one of the best things about having an RGH Xbox 360 is that I can take this game disc and install it on the hard drive and play it without actually putting the disc in the drive now. So let's go ahead and get this game started. I'm using Aurora as the loader here, and what's also great about using Aurora is if I press the home key at any time, it will actually tell me the current temperature. So before I start this game, right now I'm running at 45.9 on the processor and 49.3 on the graphics. So let's go ahead and get the game started, and we'll see how the temperatures hold. I do have a Xbox 360 controller here that I have made modifications to where I installed the Xbox One thumbsticks. Let's go ahead and press start. And we'll get started here. I'm not going to be connecting online. I've already played through the original cutscenes, so I am going to go ahead and just start on my campaign. Adam, I'm sorry. So what's so special about this church? You have some sins to confess? It's hard to explain. If I don't tell you at the cathedral, you may not believe me. You're going to tell me everything once we get to the cathedral. Deal? Is there a way to run here? I'm pressing some of the keys to see if I can run. Maybe shift? No. Yeah, I don't see a way to run. Lloyd. Roger. You see one of them. Aim for the head. It's your best bet. Got it. This is where the reception was gonna be. They'd all be here eating dinner right now if... You think anyone survived? I hope so. I can't believe this is happening again. It's just like Raccoon. Yeah, I'll never forget it. We're going to this cathedral of yours. But if you really did have a hand in this, 
You can kiss your freedom goodbye. What was that? Only one way to find out. Let's go. It's a bit of a maze. Resident Evil is a puzzle game. Hey, turn off the office fan. Get it darker in here. Got it. Turning off office fan. There, I can see better now. So I've been playing a few minutes here. Let's go ahead and check my temperatures. So I am running at 49 and then about 53. So it raised about uh, four degrees on the graphics. Still seems to stay pretty cool though. Let's resume. I'm not sure what's going on. I keep dying. Well, it looks like I died. So, uh, let's go ahead and just log out now. I will continue this later. Let's go ahead and check my temperatures here. Looks like I'm actually cooling down a little bit, so the fans may have kicked in a little higher. Um, what I have done, actually, let's go ahead and take a look here at my fan speeds. Resident Evil 6. Yeah. So I'm in dash launch and I have my fan speed set to 80. Which I can turn up and down. Um, I can turn on or off. I'll keep it at 80 though. I think that's a, a good speed. It's not too loud um, for my I don't sit too close to it, so it's not too loud for me to have to listen to it. Hit save here, and I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. <laughs>